Hey guys, so I found uh, some awesome resources last night for figures of speech in the Bible. And uh, this is like the ultimate resource. It's a book called Figures of Speech Used in the Bible. Um, so, this is by E.W. Bollinger. Um, he might not actually use, you know, everything for the, the King James, but for something like this, it wouldn't really matter. This would be highly applica applicable to the King James. Uh, well, it's like 35 bucks on Amazon. But I found a PDF file of it, and I put that on my website in the literary forms. So, uh, but I found another resource that goes through a lot more figures of speech that I didn't know and explains them well. So I'm going through my website and I'm trying to reorganize things on the literary forms, organize a list of the figures of speech, give each figure of speech its own page. So, uh, oops. So I can add more examples from the Bible and explain things better. But anyways, I want to talk about this one that I found last night, Antonomasia. Antonomasia is the figure of speech in which a person's proper name is exchanged for another person's name or ep epithet. The, na the new name brings attributes or characteristics that are the reason for the exchange, Antonomasia. A very good example of Antonomasia occurs in 2 Kings when Jehu was coming to kill the wicked queen Jezebel. She looked out her window and said to him, Had Zimri peace who slew his master? 2 Kings 9.31 Jezebel knew Jehu was not Zimri, so why did she call him that? When Ella was king of Israel, Zimri murdered him to gain the throne, and then had the distinction of having the shortest reign of any king of Israel, a whopping seven days, 1 Kings 16, 8-15. By calling Jehu Zimri, Jezebel hoped she would get Jehu to recall that people who killed the king in order to be king usually did not do very well. And this might save her. Thankfully, Jehu was not bothered by being called Zimri and killed her and took the throne. Another example of Antonomasia occurs in the book of Malachi, when, which foretold that the prophet Elijah would come before the day of the Lord. Malachi 4, 5. Because, or behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. When Jesus' disciples realized he was the Messiah, they naturally asked why the teachers of the law said Elijah must come first. Matthew 17.10 Jesus told them that Elijah had come first, but the religious leaders did not recognize him. Matthew 17.12 Then the disciples realized that Elijah was John the Baptist. Matthew 17.13 Like Elijah, John was a tough man and a great prophet living in the wilderness without any recognizable teacher working directly with the people and in conflict with the political leaders of the day. Calling John Elijah certainly fits well, but the Antinomasia can be a confusing can be confusing if we do not pay careful attention to the biblical text. Now I realize it could be like a dual prophecy also that Elijah could be one of the prophets that comes in Daniel's seventieth week, one of the witnesses. Uh but Continue here. The last example of Antonomasia we will study occurs in Ezekiel 34, 23 through 25. These three verses mention my servant David and David my servant. However, a close reading of the context shows that David refers to the Messiah, and the prophecy is about the millennial kingdom. When Christ rules from Jerusalem, the whole chapter refers to people as sheep. In contrast, this world in which shepherds do not take care of the flock. Ezekiel 34:3. With the millennial kingdom, when there will be one shepherd who will be prince among them and tend them, Israel will be safe from both human and animal threats. The land will be blessed, and showers of blessing will fall. Calling Jesus Christ David is appropriate because David was a shepherd, and the figure adds richness to the biblical text. But Bible students must read carefully and pay attention to the context to fully understand what God is communicating in his word. So I've seen that people actually think that King David might reign in the Millennial Kingdom. But it's a figure of speech use, so this could be one that's hard to, uh, you know, 
get that right from the text. Um, so figures of speech are very important. I'm seeing more and more teachers teaching falsely by you know misinterpreting the text, giving a literal meaning to something that's a figure of speech. And I'm sure that I've made the mistake plenty of times too. Uh, so this is something that we all need to study more. Um, you know, like the anthropomorphism when it says that God repented and and he really didn't repent. It's just as if he would have repented. It's like he repented, but um, you know, and, and like the verse that says that you you watch because you you don't know the day or the hour that the Lord Jesus will return. And I've seen so many people interpret that literally. They'll say, yes, you can know the times and the seasons, you just can't know the specific day or the hour. That's a false interpretation. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what figure of speech it is. I'm thinking that it's maybe metonymy, because metonymy is a figure of association, and day, uh, days and hours are associated with time. They are measurements of time. Okay, so really what Jesus is saying is that you don't know the time when I'll come back. And therefore it's not speaking of the second coming either because those uh, those who would be in Daniel's 70th week would be able to time that out. Um, the thing is that we don't know when Daniel's 70th week will start. And um, his coming for the rapture will be right before that. So that's the coming that we won't know the time for, but anyways, so I'm going through this list, trying to organize things. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do it yet, if it's going to stay like this or not, but I'm going to be adding a lot to them. I'll probably be making a lot of videos on different figures of speech, so there are some really important ones, and uh, I need to learn these just as much as anyone else, I'm sure, so, so thanks for watching. God bless. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven.